Thing, if you could bring us to order. Okay, so we are starting today, Wednesday, June 30th, um, 2021 at 11.50 a.m. The Kikorito Beautiful Board of Directors meeting at 619 Reynolds Street at the City of Rio Environmental Services Department conference room. Um, I am calling the meeting to order with roll call to start. Yes, Madam Chair, I will um, call roll. And if you are here, please indicate by saying present. Leslie Adame. Jackie Sutton. Present. Masi Mejia. Mayra Hernandez. Tracy King. Present. Jean Belmares. Present. I, Aida Aida Aidas. I'm so sorry to pop the train now. And Vianney Ramirez. Okay, Madam Chair, you have three members of the commission present because our bylaws say that any number of present members constitutes a quorum. We can proceed with the meeting. Okay, so the approval of the minutes. We don't have one. We don't have minutes. Um, and the explanation there is because um, we were appointed, the slate of members were appointed during COVID and we haven't had a meeting because of COVID. So this is our first meeting post pandemic. Okay, and citizen communications? We don't have any citizens visiting us today. Okay. Discussion with possible action on the following items. The election of officers would be first. I would just ask the committee to entertain a discussion right now. If you want to wait perhaps till our next meeting or do you want to go ahead and elect from the current membership that's present today? I'm always going to be here. I'm always going to show up one way or the other, right? So I uh, know that you will be as well. I know, I, I, know I will, and Jackie will. Jackie. So too. between the three of us, there's three board members there. Who from the rest of the list could potentially be board members that they come regularly, but for whatever reason, they aren't here? Yeah, I believe, good attendance. I believe that um, we do have a two, two, at a minimum, two other best. I, I don't, we have not heard very much from either Aida, uh, Ms. Yeras, or Ms. Ramirez. And so I don't expect them to continue to serve with us in all honesty because it's just been difficult to communicate with them. Um, and it just hasn't been me. Ms. Lucy has also been trying to communicate with them as well. Um, so I think we, we will have two other, oh, and Ms. Adame, excuse me, I skipped her, her name as well. Ms. Adame is interested and I believe she's been responsive to us. Today work kept her from being able to come and she did explain that. So um, there's three other members there that I believe are dependable and will be able to be a part of the committee. Um, they just had other commitments today. So then needing four members to be part of the, uh, the officers. That is correct. We have three of them present today. And from those uh, that you mentioned, we could probably select one other mm -hmm. that uh, could be voluntold <laughs> to, to be an officer. What are the, uh... So the four members uh, required are president, the vice president, the secretary, and a treasurer. Jeff, if you look at page three of your bylaws, it's listed there. Article 5 officers and it's section 2, 3, 4, and 5. Thank you. So then we, we agree to, you know, I guess, do it to me. If that's the wish of, of the board. We could elect someone that's not here and then take does not agree right. to okay. serve. Or just bring them in and, and, and confirm their, their selection. Yeah. That would but you have the I think you want to nominate Mr. Ben Myers <laughs> to be <the> president. <laughs> um, I don't mind you, but I think I'd make a great vice president and help you become president. Because I can sit next to you and, and, and kind of walk you through Robert's Rules of War and that kind of stuff. And I think you'd be perfect for it. 
can see. Because I think you do much better at it than I will. Um, Thank you for that trust. So, <laughs> I agree. And, and I can be a great resource to you at that point. I mean, I've run tons and tons of meetings, and so uh, you can just lean over and say, what am I saying? I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. If you all don't mind. So, I, I trust in her um, learning from her. So, so that's my nomination. I would defer my nomination to nominate uh, Tracy to be our president. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I second that nomination. And as you can be the vice president, and I can learn a lot from being secretary. Okay. That'd be great. Sounds good. So we have nominations on the floor. So I, I, I move that we accept the nomination of Tracy King as president, myself as vice president, Jackie. Jackie as secretary. And for treasurer, what is what is Ms. Lama doing? She works with um, Southern, Southern Distribu Sanitation, oh, or Southern Sanitation. Distributing. She's, yes. in, she's in their office, right? Yes, yes. Treasurer right there. Okay. Um, Plus she's, as long as your she, committee is in, I'm in agreement with whatever the committee is she's, she's close. She's close to a potential big donor, so that's. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you would not want English teachers to be a treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Does that mean math isn't your strong suit? No. Not at all. <laughs> Admitting that. You're either a math person or an English. Like, there's no in-between. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> there's no in-between. So, that is my motion. All right. So, we have a slate of officers. Madam Chair, if you'd like to uh, call for the question, which basically is asking everyone to vote yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, you say so those words, call for, the, I'll call for the question. Okay, call for the question. And um, all, all in favor? All those in favor? Say aye. Say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed, all those sign. opposed? Same sign. Same, same sign. sign. Same sign. Same sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. No one says anything? Right. Okay. And the motion passes. The motion, motion has been passed. Yes, item, that was one item, so excellent progress. That's our first bullet point, check mark. So, Madam Chair, if I might, um, touch on the next two bullet points because we kind of have to take them together and I can explain what we're looking for. Um, I did have a discussion with the city attorney's office. The um, ordinance um, is before you the copy. It says ordinance number 2018-00 or 0050 mm -hmm. at the top. And then you have your bylaws, which are the Keep Laredo Beautiful Articles of Incorporation. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to look at these two things. I was discussing with the city attorney's office. If it supersedes the bylaws, but as it turns out, the bylaws govern the minutia of what this committee can or cannot do. One big example of that is what we discussed a little while ago about the quorum. And so we need to decide as a, as a committee, or I would ask the board to entertain a decision to perhaps bring the bylaws, update them, and then bring them into line with this ordinance. Okay. And so what I have seen in looking at it, um, if we could turn to a page in the ordinance, And then we compare that to the bylaws. Um, which I believe is section eight on page two. That says removal. Okay. So there's two different two different sections that are contained in the ordinance that are then in section eight. So meeting frequency, I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry, the very no. first page. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Made, uh, yes. Uh -huh. um, in the very first page, Article Three, membership section three yes. says that the membership meeting shall be held at the discretion of the board. Yes. Whereas in the
this is once a month, and then if you just go all the way to the end of your bylaws on the last page, on page five, there's another section. needed to go right. basically in the meetings. yes in the meeting section so this one has something different too <laughs> so, okay, so, so we've got the ordinance and the ordinance needs to be reflected in our bylaws basically so the ordinance requires that we meet at least once a month mm -hmm. so then uh, madam chair i would move that we bring our bylaws into alignment uh, for meeting frequency to match section uh, dash 153 uh, meeting frequency for once a month and bring that back to the board for confirmation once we have all our uh, proposed amendments to bring to, the, to a, a former board should we have uh, yes, a form of this. Okay, of course. Mm -hmm. And that would be my motion for, for that first item, which is the meeting frequency okay. within our bylaws. So, Again, the motion is to align Article 3 membership, Section 3 meetings, and uh, Section 4 uh, board, Section 3 meetings, in alignment with the city ordinance, mm -hmm. Section 2 153. And that those three be aligned to have meetings monthly. Yes, thank you. So you would um, say the same thing, all in favor? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Same sign. Same sign. Motion passes. Motion passes. Okay, great. So we have one on meeting frequency taken care of. So then the next And then we have the location of meetings. <laughs> Recording, mm -hmm. and then that gets posted later on the YouTube channel that the city has for committees and commissions. So, um, so that was just an updated practice that came into effect actually pre pre pandemic. Um, but it, I don't think in terms of infrastructure, all the departments were set up to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's still fairly a new practice for uh, the, the committees to, to take on. And, and that's, you know, it falls on staff. So staff. On. We Section 2-155 of the ordinance, uh, meetings and reporting. Uh, meeting reporting and live streaming, I'm sorry. That would probably be good because you're updating your bylaws. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be a good idea. And so does location need to be specified? That's what I was going to ask because it's not, we're not at City Hall. Should yeah. we specify it's here at Environmental? We're going to, yeah, I mean, this is where we have the, I, I, let me, if it's okay, can I consult the city attorney on sure, that? Sure, because it says if possible. Right. right. And so, if it's available, and I know that everybody uses City Hall, the council chambers for their meetings, planning zoning does. When they have all those meetings. Yeah, the and, and especially at the beginning of the month, there's like a huge traffic jam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, those first Wednesdays and those first Thursdays of the month. Which is one of the reasons I was kind of pushing towards the end of June was so that we wouldn't have too much conflict with other committees and commissions in the event we were made to have this meeting in another site. So, and also the, the time is perfect for us in the summer, but come right. August we're, we're going to be working, so mm -hmm. I would have to push it to PM. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and, and this room is readily available, I think, yes. more so than other locations. 
So I, I'm in agreement. I just want to check with city attorney's office if it's necessary to go that detailed. Okay. Well, for the purposes of our updating our, our, our bylaws, I would then just motion that we include uh, at a minimum section uh, dash 155 mm -hmm. for the reporting and live streaming. And uh, if need be, then you can make that recommendation to us plus uh, the come our next meeting, whether we should incorporate uh, dash 2154 into our bylaws. If the location needs to be specified. But at the very least, I think we ought to incorporate the meeting should be recorded and or live streamed and all those provisions that are in 2155. That's my motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say aye. All those opposed say aye. Motion passes. Yes. Yeah. Aye. Right. We're getting it. <laughs> Trust me, I, it, it took a long time for me to learn. And I had to do it up at the airport my first experience. Then. When you call for a, a motion, I have to, you know. Ask for a second. I have to ask for a second to make sure someone else agrees. Right. Without without a second, the motion dies on the table. Mm -hmm. so without a second, can I second it? As uh, the typically, the chair doesn't okay. allow the board members to do. It, but because there's no specification on how we operate for opportunities award yet, the chair could. But typically, in, in most governing bodies, the the chair, the president, the uh, CEO, whoever's uh, um, managing managed meeting, meeting mm -hmm. does not have the uh, the second. Okay. Second belongs to the floor, to the members of the board. Okay, so I would ask, do I have a second? Do I have a second? Okay. And if and you have a second, then you say, okay, discussion. Oh, discussion? Typically, there's discussion, right? If there's a, mm -hmm. I mean, we have a full body, you would ask for discussion so people can banter back and forth. And then you say, okay, I have a motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. All those, All those opposed, opposed, same sign. Same sign. Same sign. And then motion okay. passes. Okay. 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 okay, thank you. And then if you don't get a second, you kind of give everybody an opportunity. So, not here, not hearing a second motion. Uh, the, uh, motion fails for lack of a second. Mm -hmm. so. And we can ask for discussion if, if no one if no one seconds it. Can we ask why, or we can discuss that? Uh, typically, typically, it doesn't happen. Person, the, typically, the person who makes the motion is going to lobby the rest of the committee for for a second. You know, guys, we need to do this. Or whatever, and they'll make their they'll they'll, they'll make, make their plea to get a second. But if there is none, then the discussion dies right discussion there. Discussion dies. At least for that motion. Okay. There can be further discussion on the item, but there's no motion that can go forward. Okay. And we do have a Robert Rules of Order primer in our board resource folder that's in the Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the next time we can script bits and pieces for you so you have it, the wording in front of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Does yes. that sound, That's how I live. Does that sound good? Yes. That sounds good. That. Okay. Yes. The cheat sheet. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. 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 So yeah. We give those. Cool. So we can give you some additional <laughs> tools to help. Yes. So. That sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, the next one has to do with um, the. So there are there are little words in here. For instance, going back to meeting frequency, committee shall meet at least once a month unless otherwise authorized by the city manager or stipulated by law. Our bylaws are the laws that govern us here mm -hmm. and how we do things um, in terms of running the meetings. So anywhere you have that little phrase, um, that's where this comes in mm -hmm. and kind of fits into this other document, this other um, law, if you will. So, automatic forfeiture is close to where we have removal on section eight, but I don't think it's exact, and I think we just need to um, make sure that what the what the bylaws read is is closer to what the because it here it. it calls for automatic forfeiture in the in the ordinance and in the removal provision 
um, the board considers removing the ind the individual as opposed to an um, or different than what you see. Section A, right? In the Correct. Removal. Yes. And then how it compares to automatic forfeiture in the ordinance, which oh, okay. is page. Oh, yeah, the body of it is on page three of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So three meetings in one time, and then who we'll missed three consecutive board meetings? So alignment with the ordinance would mean, uh, Madam Chair, plus if I correct me, if the alignment means that the ordinance says three, irrespective of whether they're consecutive excused mm -hmm. absences, or R say they have to be consecutive mm -hmm. or four in a fiscal year, mm -hmm. not a calendar year, which is a little different as mm -hmm. well. with the ordinance rather and so we need to bring that that sentence where it says members who missed three consecutive board meetings and and staff can make make those fixes for you and bring you back a revised bylaws or the bylaws are both the bylaws need to change because right now we're governed by ordinance that supersedes our bylaws. Yes. In this particular section, yes. yes. And, and also, okay. I mean, going back to, to stipulated by law, uh, I'm a federal, not necessarily our bylaws, mm -hmm. um, and, and or council action. So while we could create. They were still discussing it. Like I didn't, get a, I didn't get a definitive. Before we came into the meeting, uh, to my question about ordinance supersedes bylaws, that was my question. Uh, mm -hmm. They were still debating. They still had, didn't have a real clear read for me. So when I was discussing it with Sophie Garcia as our attorney, and I was discussing it with her, she said, let me talk to Mr. Benavides. Um, the Committee, and we we can work on it together. So, well, and I agree. I, I mean, at minimum, we could we could make our efforts to align as close to the, to the other day, but no, they will need to count us, which is which yes. takes precedence. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Three consecutive or three three absences in a calendar year. Um, like the way it says here in the, uh, in the ordinance. In the ordinance, it says whether they be excused and excused consecutive or non consecutive. That's correct. So, so it like, says either or in those the ones that we have here. Yeah. The bylaw says just it has consecutive. to be three consecutive days. So we're trying to motion that it's either or. That it's. That, that we would take the language out of the ordinance and incorporate it directly into our bylaws, mm -hmm. so that it aligns mm -hmm. with the the uh, three meetings in a calendar year, irrespective of whether said absences are excused, unexcused, consecutive, or non-consecutive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then that's for a motion. Mm -hmm. I second that motion. Right. Now, the only thing that would be out of uh, uh, out of the ordinance would be the the council removal because. We're not appointed by council per se, right? You're correct. The bylaws says you're appointed by the city manager, and then that goes to the council. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a little odd there too. So then, uh, I guess the incorporation there would be that nothing here prohibits city manager through council action from removing a committee member at any time for any reason. Mm -hmm. So that would be the other adjustment we would have to make since we are. Serving at the pleasure of the city manager. Okay. 
Yes. That, and I also believe automatic forfeiture. Because our, our bylaw reads that the board can consider removal of the individual. Okay, so then can we break that into two sections for our bylaws? I think one, so. Automatic removal? Yes. Right, based on, on attendance? Mm -hmm. And then removal by committee or the city manager? Mm -hmm. Right, a membership or committee. Uh, but membership committee or city manager. Mm -hmm. So two, two separate sections, so section eight would have an, uh, an A and a B, mm -hmm. right? A, yes. automatic removal would be, be the removal. For attendance. Right, for attendance. And then for membership committee and city manager. Yeah, <coughs> membership and or city manager. Mm -hmm. So that would be my motion. We would align it that way and bring that back for board approval. Okay. Do I have a second? I second have a that motion. motion. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Same sign. Motion passes. Cool. Yes. I believe that is the extent of the uh, current in comparing the language of this ordinance with our bylaws. Now the other matter to consider is, um, I don't know if we want to maintain the quorum provision that appears to have been approved in 2008. From my research, I can see that the, the present members of the board approved that, but it just was never officially incorporated into the articles. Mm -hmm. The version of the articles, when I came to, to read it and look at it, still had some changes that hadn't been completely, you know, finalized in the document, and this was one of them. So I, I uh, will leave it up to the board if you want to establish a number, a minimum number, or just keep this provision as is. Or I can consult with city attorney on this one as well. I believe mean, like today we had enough notice and enough opportunity to confirm and those that were able to make it should make quorum. Right? And if we put a set number and then they didn't make it, we would cancel plans. Mm -hmm. And so we had enough time and enough notices to come and, and make the meeting and feel that we don't need to put an exact number on the quorum. So now we've not have progressed. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. And, and it's a valid point. While I'm, I'm a big fan of making sure that we have, you know, uh, a fair representation of the body mm -hmm. to make those kind of decisions, um, you know, until we establish a regular uh, number of people coming to the meeting where we can say, okay, we feel comfortable now that we can establish a set number for quorum, you know, I would want to leave this provision in as is mm -hmm. until such time. For fear that we wouldn't be able to do anything mm -hmm. as a body. Right. So. Would it be too much to ask minimum have the president and vice president present? Or is that too much to add? A little too detailed? Because it already says it on the um, office, Article 5 on officers, it does say that, well, the president shall, you know, shall be, oh, not present though, just preside about meetings of the board. Either or, the president or the vice president shall act in absence of the president. So either or, president or vice president has to be president. Personally, I think that's a little too detailed. detailed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that the provision for attendance should apply equally across the board to all to of the all board. board. Right. And again, if we bring the, the bylaws into alignment with the ordinance, the removal of those who are coming is pretty much automatic. A foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So, yes. 
we as we as officers are going to be present. Mm -hmm. And so, at the very least, I think the officers care enough about the organization to be here and, and have meetings. And so, I I kind of see leaving the the, uh, the no quorum mm -hmm. either for now and then see how how we thin out the herd at that point mm -hmm. based on. Who shows who doesn't show in the future? Yeah, the progression, progression. of our meetings. Mm -hmm. And since it's after pandemic, it's we're barely getting the hang of things of meeting for so it should get stronger and more committed. So then okay. maybe we can look into keeping the course. Plus with the yesterday at the district six advisory, we did it in a hybrid format. Yeah. Uh, so half the group was present, the other half was uh, virtual. Virtual. Okay. And uh, again, you know, we don't run it's not a, a a governing body of any sort. It's just an advisory body to, mm -hmm. to the council member. But the, the, the format worked. And we're about, we as a company, look at three groups about. Again, um, there'll be presentations and things of that nature. There's no reason why we can't continue to announce these meetings in a hybrid format. You know, you know, we do, if you want to attend the meeting live, you can. This is where it's going to be held. But if you can't make it, then you can join them via Zoom, or you know, WebEx, or whatever we use. So maybe in the future posting, that's what we we'll tell them. We can um, approach city secretaries and city attorneys about that. Okay. I'm not exactly sure that that's being allowed. And so I need to get a clear understanding for that. The last city council. And that, and that, in essence, is the precedent that we should all be I'm following. Hoping, well, I'm hoping that that's yeah. what they would allow, at least for, for the now, to people get comfortable, because there's some folks masks, and then if you don't wear masks, there's a, mm -hmm. some would be stigmatized with the fact that they're wearing right. a mask. And then we have a new be, variant out there that I'm yeah. sure also causes concern. be the, the norm for a while until such time mm -hmm. when I agree comes and I would like to have the hybrid so that we can have full participation. Right. I, I believe that will help us get more members. The okay. best thing we can do is ask and see what's yes. happening. Yeah let me let me find out cool. and get a clear read on hybrid meeting yeah. format. All new stuff to us as well. Yes. <laughs> Just trying to get familiar with it. We had we had a, a, the worst experience with the LTGI our very first hybrid meeting with LTGI, the wrong mics, we had uh, directional mics instead of the omnidirectional mm. mics. Our cameras weren't positioned right. We had one camera instead of three cameras, which I our system so that when people were talking, they could hear the people that were virtual speaking to the group, and then we didn't adjust our our panels, our microphone panels, to not pick up the monitor. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's just mm -hmm. awful. There's a lot of technicalities to think of when executing the hybrid format. Yeah. Oh. So that's how a year teaching online has been I think that, well, that's right. challenging. Right. One whole year. You're on mute. Yeah. You're on TV. <laughs> you are you speaking? Turn off your mic. <laughs> Can't Doctor, you can't even hear me. Doctor can Carol, you hear me? Are you there? Dr. Carol made Yeah, Wi Fi. I mean, it's just all right, right. We learned a lot of lessons in that. Yeah, way. it's uh, it's it's so there's, yeah, I, I understand what you're asking. I think we can, um, with our setup here and then with some additional equipment, be able to make mm -hmm. something happen. Sure. Um, because that we can't, we do have a line out, so we can broadcast from here. We do have that capability. Cool. Um, but we only have that one mic to pick up the sound here, so we need to make sure that we have audio coming in as well. So gotcha. there's some technicalities to see if we can make it happen in this room, and if we can't make it happen in this room, we might be able to meet somewhere else, mm -hmm. where I know that, uh, especially, we lean a lot on Mr. Leal over at Public Access gotcha. to help okay. us figure this out. So I know that he'll he'll help us, and, and if that a hybrid meeting model is something Is your equipment. 
So okay, if you need thank it, you. just let us know. We have thank everything you can imagine to, to conduct hybrid video meetings. So. Right, right. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, I, w I feel like I would need a technical director. <laughs> <laughs> And, to, and then to learn the technical side of it, like you said, to make sure we're receiving the audio, is audio going out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Video going out, video coming in. There's a there's a lot to it. So. There is, definitely. But um, we will look at that. And I will ask both uh, city attorney and city secretary what, because it's not dictated anywhere that we can't. Right. I have noticed that. So. Well, and again, the big the big question then becomes, you know, how long will the governor allow these types of meetings to come forward? Because right now, state law will also govern what we do as we move forward. So, Madam Chair, I think we have discussed the last item that I feel needed to be looked at um, in having you know read the bylaws that forum matter was the last point so I would just uh, perhaps ask that um, anything else you would like for us to address we can bring that item back so that there's ample discussion as well as the opportunity to take action um, at the next meeting. So we can leave it open for now. Um, staff will go back and consult with city attorney's office. We will uh, update the articles. And we will discuss it on the next agenda before finalizing. Is that um, meet with the approval of the committee? Yes, and also if they do allow the hybrid meeting, in our attendance like section A that if they don't meet if we don't you know meet even hybrid online would that also constitute like a I'll ask if that needs to be incorporated just in case yes yes okay so this is pending the quorum correct well, I no. I would think make that a motion that we leave the leave the quorum uh, provision as is, and the bylaws until further notice. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So, all those in favor? Say aye. Say aye. aye. Or actually, you need a second. Okay. I second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. So we would be in the uh, bullet establishing a meeting schedule for the remainder of the year, 2021. I believe we chose Tuesday eve, um, afternoon at 4, 4.30, uh, once a month, and that worked out. We were, um, we had just prior to the pandemic. Yeah, prior yes, to the pandemic. Yes. Yes. It worked on everyone's schedule, the ones that. Vice President. I run, I run my own shop, so I can get out of there if I need to. The only guy who cramps my style is one of the councilmen of the We have a uh, District 6 advisory on, on Tuesdays, but it's mm -hmm. usually the last Tuesday of every month. So if we can avoid the last Tuesday of every month, we're good. Do you do Wednesday? No, Tuesdays are fine. Tuesdays are fine? Okay. Yeah, but my, my meeting, and again, my meeting with him is usually 7 o'clock. I believe we have said the first or the second Tuesday. Yeah, and ours is the last Tuesday. Okay. Right, so. And then they used to be the first Tuesday. Okay. So that works. Okay. And yeah, there's enough of a gap in there, even if you were to have it on the same day. Yes. My meeting is with him doesn't start till seven. So plenty of plenty of room. In the so then we agree first Tuesday of every month. Uh, yes, uh, motion to establish a meeting schedule uh, adhering to the first Tuesday of every month at 4.30 p.m. Yeah. 
May I make interjections really quickly? Uh, well, I guess you need a second for a discussion. Um, I second that motion. Um, so that would make our next meeting July the 6th. So that's next week mm -hmm. on Tuesday. And that's also, everybody's coming off of the holiday weekend. Monday is typically the day that's being observed. That's the day we're observing July the 4th. Not that we couldn't do it. We can do it that day. Mm -hmm. But would you like to move the, first, the next consecutive meeting since we're so close mm -hmm. to the next month to August? To begin August. Yes to begin in August. Well, we also have some resolution issues to, to, to go through. We need to, one, get, get with the city attorney, and we need to give right. them some time to look at our, at our amendments. Yes, I don't know that I can be ready by next right. Tuesday. And then we also want the, you know, the city secretary to reach out to those members who didn't show. Right. And again, knowing that we're going to be adopting this rule, if they're still appointed come, come time we adopt, they're going to be out automatically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Relatively quickly, so. So that would make the next uh, date then in August is August 3rd. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. To give us time to work. I'd be in Hawaii that day anyways. You would be. Yeah. Oh, I would be in Hawaii, so. So, so Janae, we will not have There's probably enough room in your suitcase for me. Just check you in. <laughs> just check me in. I'll be okay. I'll be blanking. And that's okay <laughs> as long as we all agree to yes. not have a meeting in October or right. so whatever the case may be. And we have justification for, for okay. that. For justification. with the proper authorities to elect and them. then right and then to be able to have it ready to come back one week is just it's not enough time for us to to get that holiday with the holiday, in between. Yes, with the holiday in between yes exactly so, so first Tuesdays of the month August starting August 3rd at 4 30 p.m. is that what we said? August 3rd at 4 30 p.m. All those motion passes. So the next um, item, staff reports, affiliate activity report. Yes, Madam Chair, that would count for myself and um, Miss Lucy. It's the memo. Updated it today, and basically, you saw that we issued the press release about attaining gold affiliate status. Um, that was why Marisa came in to just she came in to cover the board meeting, but then she was like, Oh, you have a press release. I was like, Yeah, I do. So she decided to switch the story to that. <laughs> so, um, we added the uh, rotary reopening the cleanup that we did this last Sunday. So, from March to date. Um, you see the numbers there at the bottom. Um, I feel like we've been doing great. <laughs> we've had, we've been on a roll, mm -hmm. um, and it's been manageable. That that number of activities and that number of of events. Some of them, for instance, um, on the post Easter Blitz at Lake Casablanca, I Love Laredo, Las Promesas, the Girl Scouts troop, um, ninety one twenty, the Tamiu Sigmas. In those instances, we provided something. We gave, for instance, uh, trash bags and litter pickers and gloves and supply, supplies to those groups. And But we counted it as an activity because we were a partner in that activity with them and supported those cleanups. So we haven't been out at every single one of these, but we have had good, solid, at least once a month activity where KLB is there on site registering volunteers and managing um, the volunteer uh, assignments mm -hmm. and interacting with folks and um, just being out and about. As you know, we have a sculpture that um, is right now is being manufactured or fabricated 
Um, we're hope I was hoping that we would have had it installed by now, but the fabrication is taking longer than anticipated. Um, but I do hope that we will have concrete going in um, by the end of July. Um, and I think once the concrete goes in, you'll actually be able to see the anchors that are supposed to go into the concrete while it's still uh, setting or while it's wet are actually going to be attached to the base of the sculpture. So you're already going to be able to see at least one part of Our Lady of the Water skirt I love that. at the wow. bottom of yes. Let's get that. that. What's the final location of it? We ended up um, just south of San Isidro Parkway mm -hmm. on the west side of the creek. Mm -hmm. um, the closest building to that to give you a landmark is Wing Daddy's restaurant. Mm -hmm. yep. In that little uh, uh, outcrop that's, that kind of overlooks the outfall. Yes, yes. Okay. And so it's a, I, I personally like that one because um, when you're looking at Lady of the Water, especially from across the street at Gold's Gym, mm -hmm. you see the entire Manadas Creek for a very nice stretch, like yeah. a good long stretch there. Okay. And then the other angles, whenever, if you, if you go around to the other side and you're looking towards Gold's Gym, you get some really beautiful murals in your background gotcha. there. So in terms of picturesque, it's picturesque. I think it's very visible from San Isidro Parkway as well. Mm -hmm. So people that are driving will even be able to see it because our pedestal is going to be three feet off of the ground, so three feet high, and the statue or the sculpture itself measures 15 feet based on the design specifications that we were given. So you'll have an 18-foot structure there once it's in there. So these are from the competition. Winner. Correct. Yes. And so we didn't just pick one winner. We ended up contracting with three. With, yeah, three. We, the, the money is right. We ended up saying yes. Let's just mm -hmm. yeah, we could, I remember it that. was really <laughs> difficult choosing <laughs> just one. So. And of course, the way the the proposals came in in terms of cost, we were able to fit three. Mm -hmm. so. That was very innovative on behalf that was of the selection, selection to go that direction. So I kudos to that selection committee for thinking outside of the box and not. It's not staying in that, okay, it's got to be 45000 we've got to give it to one. Mm -hmm. um, it was awesome that we could have three artists come out of those 45000 I really like that lady. Yes. Yeah, that was one of my favorites so, as well. Um, just another point on that, we, Keyboard of Beautiful uh, quarterbacked a application to the National Endowment for the Arts to create miniatures of the Lady of the Water that could be considered perhaps like, just creatively speaking, uh, the members of the court. And we proposed smaller versions of the, of, from that artist. So we proposed that artist, we proposed North Central Park, and we proposed installation of smaller sculptures similar to Our Lady of the Water um, in and around the entire trail. Mm -hmm of North Central Park. We requested $20,000. It requires a $20,000 environmental and perhaps another uh, department would come together to be able to put the, the match together. So there's potentially $40,000 that could be spent on developing a sculpture garden at North Central Park if we win the National Endowment for the Arts Award. We won't know until the fall um, what those what you know, proposals, have, how they're scored and, and what will come of that. So that's something that's related to that particular sculpture. And that's what I was hoping we'd be like almost done by the end of the summer, which we, there still may be a good chance that as soon as it's fabricated, installation goes really fast mm -hmm. um, so you know it's kind of what I'm hoping happens here that once all the pieces of the sculpture are complete because it's 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 metal um, so obviously that that's you know the welder and the artist working together to create that one-of-a-kind you know sculpture so uh, you know I, I this is our first I'm learning a lot about it mm -hmm. um, and it's been very um, educational and exciting that we'll have something you know like that there.
And when I presented to the Fine Arts and Culture Commission, I presented the NEA grant to them because Keep Laredo Beautiful alone could not apply or couldn't qualify alone for that NEA grant. We had to piggyback on the activity that Fine Arts and Culture Commission had been carrying out because you had to have three years of artistic programming to qualify for that particular grant. They have that, we didn't, but together and what we've done together shows that we have collaborated on other projects. And so, I don't know, this is the first time I've written a grant like that, so we'll see what happens with that whole thing. But it would be you know, really nice to say that because of the efforts from the utilities department to have this other sculpture, that it then led to this other you know, endeavor that is promoting that environmental art. That's so very exciting. Um, so I can go on and on about our activity. We, you know, I feel like we've, even though it was a, a pandemic year, um, we started a lot of really good things, and um, I believe we're continuing to make really good strides. Council Member Cigarroa has challenged us to address litter from that sort of sociological or psychological the perspective, the behavior perspective. So she's challenged us, the department, as well as people Laredo Beautiful, to come up with a solution to litter. Mm -hmm. no. So I would ask the committee, the, com the board members that are here to help with that. Because <laughs> we will need to collectively attack that, that it, problem. It's gonna take research, because um, my mom says, why well, travel to other cities and it's so beautiful. So rain and no trash, but when coming into Laredo, from the other end of the river, you see it, it's like, well, there, there's the culture. There's like, you know, our behavior, the way we're brought up. It's a mindset. What, it's a mindset. It's, mm -hmm. You can't compare us to the North, you know. So it, we have to do another study now on our population. Right. So it takes research as to what made someone throw that cup out of, what, what in their mind made it feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. And honestly, ever since, okay, so I've been noticing it more now, the plastic bags are all over. Mm -hmm. And I want to take I want to take pictures all the time. They're like the stuck on trees and stuck, you know, under cars and at my house flying them. It's an excellent point. If we go yeah. down that road, yes. And and whenever we have that ordinance. In it was a huge impact in a positive way. But now, like, you see them flying everywhere and stuck on trees, and honestly, I mean, if we take pictures and do that whole, you know, campaign again, it would be the same thing. Um, you know, well, the number one of, item was cigarette butts that they found. In the national survey results. In the, in the survey. survey. Cigarette oh, butts. Um, cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. And then the second was plastic film, and they couldn't clarify. Toy, you take out the plastic, you buy mm -hmm. um, yeah. your food, the packaging. you take the plastic packaging, and there's a lot of Amazon back boxes, deliveries, we take out the plastics, and, oh. and then they fly out, and they you can't catch them, you know, the wind, and so it was, it was cigarette butts, and, um, yeah. but like, Misa, he challenged to, to, yeah, Council Member Cigarro is very interested in um, literally cleaning up, just cleaning up our city, and she's taken... organized cleanups she has her own set of like gear and she comes with the intention of picking up trash mm -hmm. that's what she that's, she gets there and she's like put me to work that's what she says <laughs> so I mean it's 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 wonderful to have that attitude and that's you know I'm, I'm, it's I, it's not a complaint at all whatsoever it's, it's refreshing sort of new behavior that I'm not used to um, and that's why I make that observation but the um, the, the bigger idea that, you know, strategically speaking, that she's put on the table, literally, and has been here to this office and discussed it with our director, with us, um, as a staff, she, she's just very interested in being able to be a part of that movement and, and get, something, get something accomplished in that, in that line. Well, what I did pick up from, from the conference history is just the way he, he, 
he did the survey and the research and maybe we can mimic and try to learn from him and what surveys have to be taken, what studies have to be done. And so we can start studying first the behavior to fix that whole problem he said. You have right. to study the behavior yes. of the community. Yeah, and they have a model that we can yeah. follow. Yes, and that, I'd be interested and in And you said you would target what so the visitors being yes. We Since have our other surveys too. To there is an interesting to target the whole thing. So you kind of you study first. There's an interesting are, study that was done by Disney and why they have all of their trash cans 30 feet apart from each other. Every trash can, there's a trash can every 30 feet. It takes 30 steps to go from one trash can to the next trash can to the next trash can. You were just there. Did you see I that? was just there <laughs> last week. And there's no bugs. There's no flies. There's no the mosquitoes. And then I tried Googling why not. And it's because they have, well, the, um, noticed that the breeding for mosquitoes is still water. So there was no still water within thousands of miles, whatever, around the park. The no still water. water. So something had to continue you know, moving the water. Slow. 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 And then the trash pits were immediately empty. dumped, yeah. emptied, and emptied. But and every 30 feet, feet, there's one. Because they one of the studies that they did showed that people would not walk further than 30 feet to buy a trash can. They would just set it down on the ground. Yep. Mm -hmm. See, like, and then we look at Concord Hills, and there's a park there full of soccer kids, kids playing soccer. There's trash cans right there. And the next morning, there's 15, 20 bottles of water thrown on the floor. They drink and toss, drink and toss. And I think that's park someone else active. We pick it up for them. Have you all ever been to the Concord Hills? I've only been there like twice. We live there in the back area, the, the new area back there, and well, we pass it every day, right? Several times. Um, people playing soccer, basketball, they're in the park. Um, I mean, it's always busy, right? Yeah. Always. And yeah, we, I noticed the trash too. My there. son lives off of Midtown. Oh, right, yeah, right by there. So they, they literally finish and toss it. Again, because they know next day it's not going to be there. Someone else had already gone and cleaned it up for them. Mm -hmm. So it's that behavior as to. But are there trash cans there? Or are we... There are trash cans right there. And, just and the boys just yeah. drink it and toss it. And it's like, what is making them think Why that's okay? Why do they okay? think that's okay? Yeah. Just the way it's pushing your cart back to the, walking a few steps to push the cart, the cart. To the, the cart return. To the cart return. Yeah. Some choose not to. Yeah. Why not? It might be the same psychological mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah, so yeah, this, this, is, one. this is a big one. one. You know, we're not we're not gonna solve it overnight. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take some time. I, I do see like little signs right there. Sarcasm, something to appeal to that young children, like a little sign, like a beautiful like art picture that sh that makes them think twice. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll throw, Let me throw that. Yeah, mm -hmm. can be a good start. Or, or it could be part of it could be language too. We may need to roll out like a specific Spanish language something. Mm -hmm. These are your high school kids. It's just it's all it's a lot of high you know maybe a, like a, a cool little cartoon deal to just attract these little kids at the parks, just, just mm -hmm. to make them their moral, you know, test them or just have them question like, I'm gonna like, I don't know how to say this, but just make them feel stupid for, oh, he's throwing it, he's, let me not, he's throwing it in the trash. I'm gonna make, make clean, cool. Make clean, cool. <laughs> make him feel bad for having thrown it. And status and acceptable. And, exactly, and so I think that's what we need to, because now bullying is, is being frowned upon. It's like, why, you know. Teach you anything? Like, we need to start making yeah. throwing the trash the pool. Like a Mean Girls commercial or video spot. Yeah. Shaming somebody. And then just have that. <laughs> just <laughs> have that. Yeah. It's going to be picked. It's right, but there's, there's, you're right, there's a value that you have to tap into, and what is that value? It's so. the adolescence, it's the, the stage that they're going through. I'm trying mm -hmm. to remember, you know, my child development, right? And it's the whole trying to be cool thing. And you that's what we target right there, and make them change their vision as to, like, hey, you know, you're picking up trash, you can take that. Like, no, thank you, you know, you need to see that. They don't care that it's going to help the environment. They don't care that, oh, let me pick this up because, my future children, they don't care. They want to care as how it Well, they don't care, I think, because they don't know. They don't know. You know they don't know the actual impact. And they don't know, they won't see it. They won't see it until they're our age or, you know. But they will care as to 
how did I look doing it? Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to cut, like the campaign starting to target that and then put it on our parks, all our parks where they go play basketball, where they go play soccer. It's like we're giving this to you for free. What are you giving us in return? Just pick up your trash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my, that's we just have to, I think, educate more because it's like the plastic bags. A lot of people were more concerned because when I was working at a park here, um, a lot of people that, I, because I was the one calling and they were merchant, downtown merchants were calling me. And so a lot of people were concerned more about using their little bolsita para la basura. You know how you put the plastic bag in your little bins? That's what they were concerned about, mm -hmm. that they lost their bag and now they have to purchase it. <laughs> like they had no, I, I, I think that they didn't think of the environmental impact. They thought, oh, I'm using my, no. I'm, and it's like something that's valuable to me. There, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like they didn't realize you can buy those you know, glad bags and put them, you know, the mini waste basket mm -hmm. bags. Mm -hmm. But I, like, that was a concern. It wasn't more of the educational, environmental, like, aspect of it. They don't see what's in that for them. They need to see it real in life. Yeah. Like, what am I getting for this? Those are all really good points. Scary. So those are some of the activities that are to come. And then we have a, another page that uh, Ms. Lucy put together. These are calendars, sort of hold dates that we've got already programmed. Um, the first one is Gardening Day at MOS Library. So at the South Laredo Library, just a reminder of another one of our projects, we um, received a Greenback Grant, a $3,000 Greenback Grant, and we're implementing a butterfly garden. Um, that's also a learning and educational space over at the library mm -hmm. in South Laredo. And we're approving a section in front of the library that will help connect. There's uh, tennis courts, mm -hmm. uh, baseball fields. There's already a sidewalk that connects everything, but there's sort of just this dead space. So we are um, going to start constructing and building out. Our target date to um, inaugurate is November the 10th. I believe that was our target date to be, com you know, complete and have a party. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you take volunteers to do the planning? Or? That's what these are. Oh, yes. Great. So when you see gardening day at MOS, that first day, August the 7th, that'll be our first gardening day there. Um, and that's probably going to be a small group. We're probably not going to need more than about 20 volunteers is what I'm thinking. Um, but we haven't set out all the details yet. So this is to, these are just calendar holders for you all to be aware. Um, August the 14th is also something that's big blue in us. I love Laredo and us. Um, we are also getting the details together for that. Um, I put the first days of school so that kind of just so we know, you know, when we can start pushing things through the counselors and things like that at the schools in our network. Um, I also want to make a special outreach um, effort with CIS. Mm -hmm. With communities and schools, we uh, don't know. The mm -hmm. We we have a lot of coordinators on our database, and so they're already in our email list, okay. and we've got a few of them already. I want to target sort of the regional office and the head office that manages all of the CIS coordinators, so that. I so and they always need to send. Funny, I should say that. We manage their social media. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in fact, my so my my uh, my social media strategist with them this morning that mm -hmm. meeting, and, and we plan we have planned meeting once a month with them. So okay, cool. We can definitely help you. Okay, yeah, yes. I have I have one of the supervisor's name and number. I Um, yes, I, I'll definitely let you know uh, what comes in that conversation. If I, I don't, you know, I haven't made my cold call yet, so I need to do that. But um, and then the other is the uh, probation office. Apparently, Keep Laredo Beautiful had an agreement in place, so we just need to reactivate that agreement and make sure that they can send us folks as well. Mm -hmm. So we are working on our volunteer network all of our activities. So we're going to do a small tree planting at the library as well. Um, 
there. And then September 25th is promises to be a big one because that's with the Rotarians again. And the Rotarians by National, that was what states here go la -da -da -la -da -da. They were both cleaning up along the river this weekend. So that world, our observation of World River Day on September um, And then October the 23rd, Tamiu has already called and asked us to save that uh, date. Miss Lucy being a Tamiu student and her final semester. Or she's the co-chair. One, one of two that are managing that cleanup. So, <laughs> so Tammy, you um, is also represented at the table today by Miss Lucy. So, will this be taking place at Tammy? No? We do not have a location. That's oh, okay. one of the discussion points. Um, in the past, KLB has um, suggested two or three sites. And then Tammy, you send a committee out to look at the site and we assess it for the, basically what we're looking for is enough to do for 300 volunteers. Mm -hmm. okay. So we need a location where we can perhaps in one spot that has adequate parking um, you know, so there's a lot of things to think of. If there's a rest Um, the one that comes to mind is Juan Ramirez and Cuatro. We did, that was one of the ones that we did together with Tammy. Um, and uh, the street. And that one wasn't close to a creek, but almost everything else that we've done has been by a creek or a drainage basin. So we're, we're already, you know, we take that into account for sure. So. We learned a lot from that meeting. <laughs> so, yeah, it was yeah. a good it was a good first day for the conference. So these are um, upcoming events. There's more that will probably come into this, but uh, that is my report for now, Madam Chair. I didn't mean to be so worried. I promise next time I'll be more efficient. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Love it, love it. And I don't have anything further unless the commission has questions for me. You have a new website coming. I do, we do, yes. Mm -hmm. Together with our, our board member, we are populating our website with content. So we should have a soft launch, hopefully soon. Yay. I don't know when. As early as next week. I think okay. You've got all, I mean, Mama was really happy you sent him a whole bunch of stuff. He was kind of, look at all I got from, from Yes, from yes. And I'm, there's more that we can write, and we'll be sending, you know, more, more yeah. content. A lingering question I have is, um, you know, students like to go and volunteer, but they lose their form, their volunteer sheet, you know, one that's compatible with school, that's an account. Um, do you all offer those sheets here, or how do you um, credit their volunteer hours? What we have been doing, um, actually, it's a practice from the pandemic that we're looking to carry over. Mm -hmm. And we've been having discussions with different entities. For instance, I just met with Judge Dominguez yesterday because we get a lot of folks from municipal court that come over to do service with us. And we would like to maintain our digital certificate of service that we issued because of pandemic non-contact mm -hmm. practices. Um, so basically, service mm -hmm. and if that person uses their email regularly that email acts as an archive for you okay. and so basically your certificates in your email if you lose it you can always go back to the email and print it out and we have record of it too because we send it to you say 
you gave me a certificate at such and such date for this cleanup, or I was there and I don't remember when, mm -hmm. can you reissue? And we can reissue because we have the record and we have the person's name and we have their email. Um, the email is also very valuable to us because it kind of helps us, um, well, it helps us in different ways. A, it gives us a direct marketing channel mm -hmm. to get you know our information out and keep Laredo, keep Laredo Beautiful reports back to KTV the different ways that we connect with our audience, so to speak. And so, you know, that's definitely a very important metric for us. Um, and we're gonna hopefully adopt MailChimp so that You know, how long did they spend on, on the page? Did they click through and go to our website? Mm -hmm. You know, all those metrics are very important for us to also continue to start collecting because we haven't had a website to push people to. Mm -hmm. So now that we're going to have a website, um, it opens up a whole, you know, world of possibilities for communicating with folks and then being able to track those metrics. I feel like a calendar, right, where you have all your upcoming oh, yeah. days very mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. You yes. just click and register. I think we're using the same module uh, calendar that we use for parks. If I remember correctly, and that one has the ability to. to Click on an item and bring up the poster for that. And the link to register. To register yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll still probably maintain our Eventbrite because mm -hmm. people have been sort of conditioned to go to that, yes, especially since March, mm -hmm. and that that was one of right. our main digital channels. Correct. So. so the link that they have when they go to register will take them to. Bit brighter around. It's kind of, yeah. it be kind I love of, all that. That's just it's just it's so exciting. They're doing the digital camps. So you it's know. so exciting. Yes, I, I I'm really looking forward to having our website because, like I said, it opens up a whole nother world of being able to understand who we reach, how we reach them, and and you know I've, I've been reading um, millennials have the most buying power right now. It's equal to the baby boomer generation. Um, and I just picked that statistic up just this last week. And millennials constantly have that device in their hands. Oh, yeah. And there's just no other way, honestly, that's, yeah. that's as effective as that digital mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. And so I've been telling Lucy, we're gonna really focus on our digital forward-facing um, persona for Keep Laredo Beautiful, and we're gonna just yes. ramp all that, ramp all that up, and just bring us, update us. Hopefully, in the matter of like 30 days, we will be updated and out there in front of a lot of different eyeballs. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we have the benefit of tapping into that I haven't fully taken advantage of yet because we haven't had the website um, is Google nonprofit status. Google provides every nonprofit that they have in their, you know, array in their network ten thousand dollars to advertise on Google advertising. You know, that's their that's their, you know, I don't know what to call that gift mm -hmm. to the yeah. um, nonprofits that are part of their network, and um, I still have to activate that for Keep Laredo Beautiful. We're able to use the Google Drive and all of its tools because we're a Google for nonprofit. We have our website through Google. Google is the where we purchased our domain from. So Google's going to be our daddy, but I don't mind because Google has a 93% share on the search engine marketing yes. world out there. No one, no one is as powerful or as all knowing as Google, and Google is pretty much everything in the digital world And so I dollars. I've got my ads built out already. Awesome. I've got my keyword search done. Cool. So I know I know thankfully I know what I'm doing with that, at least a little bit. And I'm looking forward to experimenting with it to see if we can bring those um, clicks you know, what's going to get people to click on us to find out more about what we're doing? Hopefully get donors and sponsors that way as well. Um, so uh, I'm just really excited. What do you have? I'm really excited. Um, like as far as like to present to a donor, because I have a brother who might be interested in donating. 
but like what do you have like to send him to view to read to show interest I can probably right now just put something together really quickly because I don't have like a donor kit or anything yeah. like that right now okay so he owns chick -fil -A. He used to be an apostle, but he's going to be into help where he can, you know, little things here and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so giving to his community, I'm sure, is not going to be an initial. A hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> it should be an easy really cool. sell. So if something you can do. Yes, to yes. We, um, we mm -hmm. had discussed early on, we haven't had this discussion, mm -hmm. discussion lately, but how we can promote and show mm -hmm. our sponsors on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that that's going to definitely be something that's that we can do. Yeah. yeah. A, and so, you know, we can we can really help, I think, with the digital promotion. Um, I just opened up an Instagram channel and a Twitter channel for us, for Keep Laredo Beautiful. And I was telling Lucy, either TikTok or Snap. And I think we're going to go with TikTok. Uh, will be our next channel that we open up. And... Um, so right now you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just open Instagram and Twitter. I haven't sent those to Mambo yet. Okay, so you need LinkedIn. The other one I tell you oh, I was I told Lucy I was thinking about LinkedIn, and I LinkedIn hadn't. LinkedIn is, is I such forgot a great about that one. place to, to display what the nonprofit is doing and link it to or share it to the businesses around there yes, because that drives the B2B. Drives the, B2B uh, yeah. the sponsor. And that that would be my strategy was um, for donations and sort of that long term sponsor. Yeah. yeah, the legacy sponsors that we would like to get on Very board. Cool. So yes, I had thought LinkedIn was a good place for us to be as well. I just haven't opened that page, so we need to open TikTok and LinkedIn for Keep Laredo Beautiful. So um, yeah, we're getting there. Our our digital array and our digital well, presence. We have one addition to our staff. Gustavo, who was with us, uh, is going to be teaching at LBJ, so he's left. Um, and we replaced him with a uh, young lady who is a UX UI that's Very her degree, nice. that's her career path, and she needed a place where she could kind of spread her wings on UX UI, so we said, absolutely, we're, we're, we're home for you, so we hired her Very last nice. week, uh, yeah. full time. How cool. Yeah, so she's, one of her big projects was Laredo Water, uh, LaredoWater.org, which is the uh, survey master planning one that we're doing. She just went through it and it launched last week. So, nice. And now she's looking at her snacks. All right. Water, so. Very, very cool. So, yeah, the summer is, uh, you know, even though we're... Beautiful. Um, as a board, there's a lot of, yeah, finally, and, and as a board, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to work on having some strategic time for strategic planning. And that's something that I'll probably put on the next agenda. Like, I didn't want to do. Um, so aside from our regular meetings, we will need to sit down and have some blocks of time where we can plan strategically for what the board's vision is. I mean, I have, as the staff member that manages it on a regular day-to-day -day basis, to grow um, and I have so many ideas <laughs> so it'd be great to have the board align um, set up so our slate of board yes. members as well um, so I think as a board you know there's there's definitely great synergy and really great things to you know potentially put put together and you know put out there so so, so much, so much to do, so much to look forward to, and I appreciate each and every one of you, so thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we were able to meet after a year. Yes. Yeah, probably. Right? More yeah. than a year? You were appointed in April. Just with it. Yeah. You must bring the whole time. time. Yes. We need to, you know, very we're back to life. We're excited to start and do something and bring our kids in, all our students in, and get our school involved for sure. Yeah. yeah. You're going to see a lot of mixed insurance. Yay! Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they always ask us what, what we can do for you know community service. And so now that we have some dates, that's also good. We'll work with our counselors. We're seeing the counselors. Prepare them. Yes. Excellent.
Yeah, we had uh, three freshman students at, on Sunday that came with one of the Boy Scout moms that I knew that I all these tires we it wasn't we probably pulled about eight of those big truck tires the truck or trainer ones yeah. off of this fence line and they were they had been there a while because dirt had accumulated and they were stuck in the dirt so these guys worked they really worked. hard to dig it out, to get our, out. Um, yeah. our football players yes. our coach from that yes. line put me on the left to get those kids involved yeah, so they got to work out those guys. And the mom, Marcy, she was like, nobody, I had to like make them come. And <laughs> I was like, well, I'll put them to work for you, mom. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was good. And I was, I was just like, all right, these guys really earned their. We could use the, the extra young muscle. Yeah. <laughs> And it, and it makes it that much more, I hope it makes it rewarding for them. They feel like they did something really good that day, so. Okay, and they, they post it on their media. Yes. And they snap it and they TikTok it and all that stuff. Right. They're yeah. cool. They're the cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm sure those that social media that you were talking about, the TikTok and sharing um, new videos and everything that you're doing and kids being able to post about it, it's going to motivate them to go mm -hmm. and get in that, so. Right. Guys, get that, that set up and do the filters. And the, I was you, about to say that. So when you, so you, when you're at events, you pop up with filters. Yeah, we were hoping. Either snap, either snap or TikTok um, as one of our next channels to open up. Um, and a couple of people have really sold me on TikTok. But so, TikTok's great. It's amazing. Yeah. Daughters, like for my wedding, we had one. I mean, everyone gets filters for events, so you you put it in that like radius of where you're going to be, and then you know keep it beautiful um, or make a different day. Yeah, and they love it. They like, love yeah. yeah, I love it. We do it all. We do it all the time. For the for their for their place for uh, for shrek. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we, we did that. We did the filter. Mm -hmm. Nice. We do it all the time. Yeah, so um, lots of exciting um, trails to be blazed. So um, I don't know if y'all have anything else for us. No. That's it. The term for the uh, board of directors for KLV is it? It's your one year. It says. Okay, so then it will be. It will, I mean, it'll, it'll be in April 2022, two years, right? That's when we were. I'm sorry. I'm, I misunderstood. You didn't mean president, but you meant as a member. As a member. Of the board, it's two years, and yes, it should have started April 2021 because that was when you were appointed. But I'll double check on the on the start time because I the start time could be determined by when you signed your. Well, oath. the oath was 2020 during pandemic. Correct. Did I say 2020? I meant 2020. Okay, so then 2022 would be, would it be the end of the term? Because I know board members can't um, be in a, in a board for two terms consecutive, or is it three? I remember when I held city secretary office with the board, uh, boards, there were some board members that were on boards for like, 12 years mm -hmm. that should not have happened right and that's what they noticed so i don't know the legality of all that or how yeah. how that works i just was curious i'll ask our bylaws do say that each board term is two years but we don't have uh, like how many like can we continue after 2022 right. or is so it or you already limitation from okay. what i remember yeah. here it's it doesn't say it's it on the bylaws to like vote again or something it's just, it's but that could be governed by the protocol procedures handbook which is a whole nother which is I and I, I think that's where I got that from yes the, the handbook 
So that's why I'm thinking, well, April 2022 20, is like right around the corner. So I don't even remember saying, uh, saying that two years, yes, but then you would just go up for discussion for you to vote for the board members again. But the handbook is where I think I got that information. I think you're right. I think it so, is the handbook that they, there are term limits imposed. And this, this goes back to my question to city attorneys. Does ordinance supersede the bylaw? And or, and or does it work in you know concert with each other? Well, the ordinance also has to be dovetailed into the yes. protocol procedure. Right. So. Yes. Because <laughs> I, I feel like we missed a whole year of like meeting, and I shouldn't count. You know, I feel like right. that's when I do more. Right. And that question is a good question for me to follow up with to say, okay, our committee was appointed April 2020, but our first meeting was July 2021. So where does that timeline begin to tick? Does it does the, the does the clock begin to tick April 2020, or from the time that we had our first meeting, mm -hmm. or from the some other time, the the day that you took your oath? Does it start ticking from that day? I don't know. Right. Those are all really good questions. I wouldn't want to be in violation if mean, like oh it, it's ju it's July of 2022. You shouldn't be it a board member anymore because you passed your term or you know I just yes. want to make sure no, that good, those are all good thoughts okay. and, and I'll ask about those points if I remember correctly I think that mm -hmm. the, the successive terms uh, apply to council appointed committees in the protocol because they usually right. follow the council member and his election and re-election and then afterwards you could not serve a third term uh, consecutively Mm -hmm. On that board, you could serve on another board, on another board. but not that particular board. So, so not more than was it eight years? Eight years, eight years That's right? More than eight years. Not more than eight years. So, will you go? So will that you go up front? Up what we have and in, ours, um, in terms of protocol procedures, so bring it around to our office and grab uh, the law and have her just sign because we're not appointed uh, by council, but right. right. And keep it real beautiful. I mean, I don't even think it, it has. Um, it's been so long that you know there has been like a board. An active board. Right. When was the last time we had an active, an active active board? 2019, 2018, before that. I want to say it would date back to when Lynn retired. Lynn Nava, the previous executive director. With you when we were in PIO, yeah. City Hall, 2017? Yeah. Because I wasn't here when she retired. But I started in 2013, but I don't remember. So I want to say it. Alas, yes, correct. So look, if, if at the end of the day, you know, the members who are present, Kind of fly away, then. Yeah. Yeah, now I would actually, I, I've already been thinking I want to bring more people in because we have space. Yeah. Even if everybody that's appointed right now comes around and we're good. Put in four more folks. And yes, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about, you know, the folks that we've been working with lately, you know, someone from I Love Laredo would be great if we could get somebody in here from I Love Laredo. Uh, Valerie from Laredo Sustainable was just appointed to the Citizens Environmental Advisory Committee. So she's kind of already been taken, mm -hmm. but she would have been Our liaison from Rio Grande International Study Center would be nice too sure. to have someone that serves on both um, of both boards. The woman from and she West. has somebody interested. I can tell her more about it, mm -hmm. and then I can send her the application. Mm -hmm. After um, this, um, we'll get that information. And then um, I think we need to diversify. I think. Um, which is great 
she's kind of wearing two different hats when she's with us. She's both KLB and Tammy U, but she's not a, a, a voting board member. I, you know, I, those have been those are kind of been the thoughts that I've been you know thinking of, and it would be um, really good to have. Have, you know, gender diversity too. Mm -hmm. And you guys have, I don't know, we live in the in South Laredo, so we're like South Side representing South Side over here. <laughs> and then someone from the North and East and the West. You know, diverse. diverse. Yeah, I can reach out to the, the principal of right. St. Aug, uh, to Olga Gentry, and see if she mm -hmm. can have a student. I was very impressed with one of her students that called when we did our mature sounding, um, just very responsible. She's very respectful and she said, if it's if it's permissible, we'd like to have someone that checks in and checks out our students present there. And I was like, of course you can. Like, more the merrier. So I was, you know, I think that even a high school student would be would be good. Of course we probably need to have like a parent here with the high school students, so I don't know how how all that would work, but I, I can just you know just for safety purposes for that particular situation. But um, you know, another yeah. question for the attorneys. Office. Another question. <laughs> for the attorneys well, we don't have any age limitations in our bylaws, so so you see that's an issue. Well, yeah. our superintendent has what's it called, or principal has an advisory student advisory committee. Okay. So instead of having them be part of the committee here, we have a student advisory to U.S. students. What do you see as the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be another committee in itself, just a student from the school. So yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's another big push that he, Texas Beautiful is making. Um, I don't know if you saw the presentation on the Young Texan Ambassadors mm -hmm. that they launched. Those are students that are 16 to 25, 16 to 15, 15 to 25 year olds, and they just launched their version of a youth advisory council uh, during the pandemic, during mm -hmm. 2020. So, I think if we had if we had those students as board members, we could qualify ourselves as having that youth, you know, component, right? That would so. be great. And they love to put that on their resumes and stuff. It's great for their resumes. Yes. Yes, and for their college application. Right. Yes, yes. All so. Yes. All right, Madam Chair, are you ready to entertain adjournment? Um, yes. Motion to adjourn. And either Jackie or... Motion. So move. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same sign. Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned. Very cool.